Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So I was quite inspired after the other day on playing around with vehicles in Space Engineers, so I thought we would kick it up a notch and attempt to build a tank. Yes, a tank with working tracks. So this could be quite interesting. So let's actually get our colours out and let's plan our project. So when I tend to plan these, I like to draw them out first, either draw them out on paper or do it like this in Space Engineers. So we're going to go with quite a standard sort of tank design. So we'll have something like so, like as the hull, and then we'll go with some sort of turret, like so, maybe a little bit far back, like that, and then go with a barrel. And yeah, that should be pretty good. Then if we switch to the grey, we'll work out some sort of wheel formula. I'm thinking like if we have one wheel there and then we space our wheels out like so across the bottom and then have another like that. And then the next bit is layering the tracks up. How are we going to layer the tracks actually over? And I'm thinking about doing something, maybe pulling it over with a small ship like they do in the actual tank factories when they built. And then probably with that method I'll have some tracks that work and come around but then it's locking them in place so I'll have to lock them in place with a landing gear so that may add to a further challenge I think I'm gonna go with some sort of Abrams design and then maybe I can use the turret on another battleship after if it doesn't go to plan so let's get building so I started by constructing the, the turret here as you can see it's a bit based on the M1 Abrams sort of turret we've got that nice sort of sloping effect and we've got the carrier at the back but this is not too much where the complicatedness of the design actually gets. It's when we get over to the tracks that I've just started working on. So the tracks are over here. What I've done is I've done five road wheels and I've done two track sort of pulleys. So these are going to be the big wheels that actually make the track pull along. And I'm thinking about doing some interconnected mechanism. But I'm still sort of um, processing it at the moment in my head and trying to work out what to do. So I'll get back to you later. So this is going to be a rather hard process by myself, I've somehow got to get this track on and sadly no one's available to help me. So I'm going to have to just slide this on very gently and then once it's hooked in place the running wheels should just be out of the way. It's got to keep tight, it's got to have tension though and hopefully my measurements were correct otherwise the track is going to be too baggy. And that's not what we want at all. Right, so we've got to curl it down and around. That one hopefully will anchor in place while we can move this one down and around to lock it up. So wish me luck. So we're going to begin trying to keep that tension, but we don't want to cause too much inconsistency. So the track should be starting to wrap. Yeah, perfect. Just keeping it as tight as I possibly can. That other ship's got hundreds of engines, so it should lock it pretty firmly in place. So I'm going to go forward a bit, and then I'm going to come down. Oh, no, that's not good. Right. The thing is, if this track's not long enough, all of this has gone to waste. All this preparation is, is going to make it a little bit hard. So, yeah, everything's locked in place at the top very nicely. Right, I just need to rotate my ship so it's upside down now. And we can prepare for one of the hardest parts of this actual design. So we can actually place this track on now. So there we go, just hold that nice and tightly in place. And there we go. Alright, so that track is now wrapped around in some sort of form. And the next stage is connecting it up to that. And I don't know if this track is going to be the right length. So there's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong. It seems like it's pretty stable though there for the moment so I'm going to disconnect that and then start moving that around. Right so we're going to have to be very careful so disconnect gently and now just slowly pull away perfect. And Now we need to move back up and we need to just put a little bit of pressure on to straighten this this little landing gear up here so I'm just going to get this angle right I'm going to come in really gently there we go Okay, so we're just going to release that a bit and give it a little bit of up thrust. And there we go. Now it is the job of looping this bit around and hooking it up. So it is still a challenge. If this track is too long or too short, we're going to have to make some adjustments that it, it may not like. Or we might have to even change the track design completely, like have some upper road wheels. Right, it is the moment when we connect the track. 
so let's do it. So get in here. One connection. Connection solved. Disconnect. And that track is now connected. How well it'll work, I am not too sure. But I'm sure we'll soon find out. What I've decided on before we do the test is we're going to actually extend the barrel of each wheel right to the edge so it fits a lot better. So let's do that now. Right, so I've got the track turning pretty well. There's a few problems. The track doesn't seem to be really tight enough. So it's causing some grinding issues in some areas. But most of it is easily fixed. There's just one or two issues. I mean, it's not the most practical thing in the world. But we need to tighten up this track, get some gravity on, and actually see what happens when it puts it down on the ground. And then we need to sort the other side out. And hopefully when gravity is actually applying on the bottom bit, we'll have a very different result than this jammy sort of track that we get in at the moment. But we'll have to wait and see. Right, so everything's set up. We're going to actually see if this track can actually get us moving. It is doing something. Hold on. Oh my, it's working. It's working. We've lost a wheel, but it is technically working. The track is actually moving us along. Right, so let's just... Maybe we should crank this up to the extreme. Right, so this time I've put the velocity up to maximum on all the wheels, so we'll see what happens. Okay, this is quite interesting. Seems like the wheels on that side are doing the most of the work. Um, maybe a little push forward might help. Oh no, we've detracked ourselves. Okay, we then we we then have to work out what we can do to actually fix this. Hmm. We'll try putting the other track on and see if it, maybe balancing out the tracks is what it needs. Right, I'll continue on with that. So we've lowered the tank down and we've got both sets of tracks on now. Hopefully everything will go well. We're using two gravity generators, so that's two times the standard gravity. So we can actually get it down and hopefully get some traction, get some grip on the surface and get this thing moving forward. All the rotors are set up. So fingers crossed that it will move and go forward and if it does we'll be able to get the turret on and this thing is going to be absolutely awesome in my opinion. So let's get this thing starting. So we're going to get rid of the forward and backwards thrusters just so they don't give us any th uh, frustration. <laughs> right okay let's give this thing a start. Alright let's start it up. Okay it looks like it is working. It is working yeah. It's working. We've lost a tr we've lost one of the wheels. Hold on. Better just get get out and help this out before it jams. Right, that's one out of the way. Make sure nothing else is falling off. Oh right. So that looks like it's a common problem. Maybe that wheel is too close to that other wheel. But from what I can tell, it is actually working. The tracks are a little bit baggy as well. That's hard to actually sort out. Let's give it a little bit of extra move, but it is a moving and it does look like some sort of epic moonwalker. Oh, we've got a jam, not good. Get that off quickly. Right, there we go. Because I'm just I'm just currently still testing it, making sure it works, but I have to say that is a tracked vehicle in full working order. All we need to do now is add the turret and go for a drive. So we're very close to the final step of actually locking on this turret. So we can actually get a fully functioning tank. I'm pretty damn excited to see how this will all come together in the end. And we've got that. I don't think it's on exactly straight. This turret looks way too big. It looks almost cartoony. Um, right, we'll go with that. I'll hold that in place and we'll get rid of some of these engines on the back. Because we've got to reallocate the power pack to the rear like the Abrams actually has. Um, so these were just the test engines. So get them out of the way. Turret needs to come a little bit further back I think. Um, da, 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 in we get, and just a few inches should do it. I should seal the deal really, um, and we'll call that calling it. Yep. So we need to just screw this thing into place, and the, probably the best way to do that is go in from the underneath maintenance access, like all good Russian tanks have. But this is an American tank, so that would make no sense. And whack one of these on. Right, so we've completed the tank. The turret ended up being quite a lot bigger than I originally wanted it to be. 
Um, we've took out a wheel here because this wheel was actually getting jammed. The track system works quite simply. Basically, we've got these two little running wheels. Well, we've got these four running wheels, and we've got these wheels that actually power it. These powering wheels manage to hook into the track and pull it along, and we've got the same going on at the back. And we've got the same on the other side. At the rear, we have the engine room. There we go. And basically, all we need to do to finish this off is add our gyroscope so we can actually turn this thing. So there's the gyroscopes added. We also have the cockpit up here for the turret and the cockpit down there for the driver. So we've got a target range set up and we're going to try to do a little bit of tank testing. We're going to try to get over this trench and then climb this hill. Hopefully everything will go to plan. So hop into the cockpit. Obviously Space Engineers is not really made to model tank sort of physics. I mean, I don't know if anyone expected a tank, but... It's been requested quite a lot, and I'm quite excited about doing it, because it seems to be working for the most part. And that's what I'm really excited about, that we've actually got tracks to work without smashing apart. Right, let's get in a turret. Let's fire at some tanks. So we need to equip our rocket launcher and, miss and missiles. And we'll equip a two. And we need to just get this into position, and then we can fire it. So we've got to be gentle. Hopefully nothing's going wrong. There's the machine gun, and now rocket. There we go, beautiful. And fire. We've got one more tank target to destroy. There we go. Is it me, or are we drifting a little bit off course here? I think we are. Oh no, we've lost a wheel. Alright, we're going to have to get ourselves back on track with the use of the um, gyroscopes, so we have to be very gentle here. As that tank target floats past us, we need to run over them people and get up that hill. So we need to just be gentle turning it. So we've still got that side of the tank operational. But we've just lost the spinning wheel on the other track. So there must be something wrong with that track. We'll have to take a look at it. But apart from that, this tank seems to be working rather well. I wasn't expecting to even get this far, to be honest. Yeah, so it's something to do with that front running wheel. Maybe there was a hang-up in the track. So we're crossing over. we we'll just ram that tank target down. And we're climbing over it. There we go, stamp it right down into the ground. The off-road capabilities of this thing are not too bad, to be honest. I mean, we've just crossed that trench, but due, probably due to our track size being so big. And you can just see the um, track adjusting to the actual terrain. Let's see what happens, though, when we get up to this hill. This is what I'm excited for. We're a track down, so we're probably not going to see full potential of what this can actually offer. But we should see a little bit of hill climbing expertise. Right, yeah, we are climbing, I think. Uh, when I originally designed this tank, I designed a really complex um, suspension mechanism, but when I actually put it into practice, it didn't work, so this is the version you've seen without suspension. And are we climbing or are we sliding now? It looks like we're climbing. It does look, it does look like we're climbing. I may be wrong. Yeah, we're climbing. We are climbing. Wow, that worked. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought that would have just failed. But yeah, if you get that other track fully operational, it looks like this could be quite a dangerous machine. Anyway, I'm going to put this up on the workshop for you guys to have a play around with. Maybe find some of the problems with it and fix them for yourself. Or maybe design your own tank. Hopefully it'll give you some inspiration. And I'll see you next time.